Hi there, it's Ali here again from All Saints Isleworth. Welcome to this service. This is going to be a service of Holy Communion. Uh, it's a Holy Communion for Lent. And if you're somebody who attends All Saints regularly, then today we're going to have the final session of the prayer course. We're going to be thinking about spiritual warfare. So welcome to that. If you're on our email lists, before you watch this, you should have access to uh, the order of service for Lent, to a printout with all of today's readings and collects on, and to a prayer tool sheet called Warfare Prayer, which we're going to be using at the end of the talk. I've also sent out in that email some YouTube links to four songs which you could pause and listen to over the internet uh, as you work through this service. So uh, do have a look at those if you would like to. Uh, they're going to be Bless the Lord, O My Soul, 10,000 Reasons, Seek Ye First, The Kingdom of God, Be Thou My Vision, and a, a contemporary upbeat song called Build Your Kingdom Here. So do have a look at those on YouTube if you would like to. The other thing that you can do to help you feel more a part of this service is uh, to press, press your pause button now and to go and get a small amount of bread. And then when we come to the Eucharistic prayer, uh, we believe that the consecration of bread is done by intention. And it's my intention that uh, any of you who are watching a part of this service and that any bread that you have with you uh, is also part of this service and will therefore be consecrated. So do uh, pause, go and get some bread if you would like to, and that will help you to join in the service a bit more. If you look behind me, you'll see pinned up on my bookcase the photo of All Saints, which was taken at the end of January. Uh, this is just a lovely reminder. I really love having that picture there. Uh, because it reminds me that even though we can't meet together at the moment, uh, we are still one because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I hope that as you join in with this service, it will remind you that you're not worshipping on your own, even though it may feel like that. You are actually still a member of the body of Christ at all saints. And although we're dispersed, we still worship God together in our own homes. And you'll see a photo of uh, the front of our church. You'll see the big pray sign that we've had up whilst we've been doing the prayer course. You'll see our beautiful stained glass window representing the river of life and uh, you'll see the communion table if you look very carefully. Uh, it's a bit hard to spot the communion table. But again, I hope that as you participate in this service, if you are a regular person at All Saints, then that will just help you to feel more connected with the community that you know and love. So as we begin, let's pause for a moment of quiet. And if you want to listen to the music, this would be a good point to listen to the song 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Our opening greeting. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. We come now to the point in our service where we say sorry to God, we confess our sins uh, because we know that we fail to live in all sorts of ways this week as he wants us to. We start with a verse from Psalm 51, the well known psalm that David wrote when he was overwhelmed with sorrow for his wrong actions. David writes, Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. And so we pray, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, 
in what we have said and done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of his Spirit all our days. Amen. The Collect for the Fifth Sunday of Lent God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a special prayer for all those affected by coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. We're going to read verses 10 to 20. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. The whole armour of God. The Apostle Paul writes, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day. And having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breast breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always pers persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
before our gospel reading, you might want to listen to the song Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. Our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. The temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for forty days and forty nights and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then. The devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, It is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Once more, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and angels came and waited on him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're going to spend a few moments now thinking about spiritual warfare and what it means to us. It's a really important subject, so let's pray and ask God to help us. Heavenly Father, we know that we are caught up in a spiritual battle. We pray that as we think about how as Christians we might fight that battle, that you will be with us. Help us to make use of that armour that Paul talks about. So be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you watching will know my husband Steve, but not all of you will know him. But he really enjoys the superhero genre of films at the cinema. Iron Man, Captain America, Spider-Man, the X-Men. But what all of these have in common is a monumental battle between good and evil. The superheroes may get hurt. They may be injured in the process of the story. Some may even die. But eventually they defeat whatever powers of darkness and evil it is that they're fighting. Now we may have no problem with the idea of the battle between forces of good and evil when it's a story like these films. But when it comes to the spiritual battle that Jesus and the Bible speaks about, that involves all Christians, we might feel distinctly uncomfortable. As a result of the Enlightenment and later the rise of science and rationalism in the West, 
Over the years, we've been taught not to believe in the concept of spiritual beings who might make an impression on the world and on us and our lives. And yet the Bible is quite open about this. We see that in our two readings, the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness and what Paul says about spiritual armour. In fact, Jesus taught the disciples and us to pray about this. Every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Paul puts this whole idea very succinctly and explains it very clearly in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. He says, For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So we need to be aware that we are involved in a spiritual battle and we need to know how to pray in the middle of it. This idea may be making you feel uneasy. It may not be something you've thought about before or it may be something that you think is for those Christians you think of as spiritual giants, but not something for you. C.S. Lewis, who wrote the children's Narnia series, wrote a lot of theology for adults as well. And in one book, he says this. There are two errors we can get into when considering the idea of demonic influence. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. So when we think about being in a spiritual battle, we need to make sure that we're neither so interested in evil spirits that we put down every mistake we make or everything that goes wrong to spiritual warfare. Some things may be, but some things are down to human error. Nor should we be so disinterested that we ignore the, the reality of the spiritual battle altogether and in doing so suffer spiritual attack unnecessarily when, in the name of the risen Lord Jesus, we can defeat the evil one. As part of the prayer course, we've been using Pete Gregg's book, How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. In his chapter on spiritual warfare, he says there are three things we need to know when we're praying in the middle of a spiritual battle. He says we must know our enemy first. Second, we must know our authority. And third, we must know how to fight. So know our enemy, know our authority, know how to fight. Let's think about knowing our enemy. In his first letter, the Apostle Peter writes, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. That's very dramatic, isn't it? That image of a, a, a roaring lion prowling around looking for someone to devour. But it's such a good description of the spiritual battle. And that's why Peter says we need to be alert and of sober mind. And that means that we need to know the ways that the evil one works to try to throw us off our track of following Jesus. Think about the ways the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness. 
He went straight for Jesus' jugular, for Jesus' weak spots. We heard in our Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 4 how the devil knew that Jesus was hungry and so tempted him to exercise his power as God's son, to turn stones into bread. But Jesus used scripture to reject the devil's temptation. Then he tempted Jesus over his identity. If you are God's son, throw yourself off this ply place. It doesn't matter because it's written in God's word that he'll send angels to protect you. Did you notice how this time the devil has cottoned on to the strategy Jesus used to re reject the first temptation of quoting God's word? So this time the devil quotes God's word to Jesus as part of the temptation itself. But again, Jesus rejects the temptation by reminding the devil what scripture says. The third time the devil tempts Jesus, he tempts him with power and glory. Bow down and worship me, he says, and I will give you all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. The devil knew that Jesus was God's son. And he knew that before the incarnation, before Jesus was born as a human being, he was seated at the right hand of God in all the glory, splendour, power and majesty that belongs to God, being worshipped by the angels. Sorry about the piece of paper there. And that he gave all of that up to be born as a frail human being like us. So the devil goes for Jesus' jugular again and tries to tempt him with glory and splendour. But the price of it is that Jesus has to bow down and worship the devil. Fortunately for us, Jesus once more resisted that temptation yet again by using scripture. And the devil, the evil one, does the same with us, exactly the same. He knows each and every one of us. He knows where our weak spots are and he goes for those with all his strength and might. Our weak spots will be different for each of us. For some of us, we might feel worthless and useless. So the devil exploits that by whispering things in our minds which make us feel even worse. Sorry about Flora barking in the background. <laughs> She's heard something on the pavement outside. Flora, shh, 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 good girl. So for some of us, our weak spots might be materialism, wanting the latest iPhone, regardless of whether we can afford it or not. For others, our weak spot might be status. I deserve that promotion and I'm going to go for it, regardless of who I have to hurt or mow down to get it. For others of us, our weak spot might be in the area of alcohol which the devil exploits for all he's worth by saying things like, go on, have just one more drink. One more won't hurt. You've had such a hard day, you deserve it. For others, our weak spots might be doubts about our faith or doubts about whether anybody could possibly love us. We all have different weak spots, but the devil, the evil one, knows them and will go for them in any way he can. And so we need to know our weak spots, we need to be honest about them. And we need to know that the enemy likes nothing better than to derail us from following Jesus by exploiting our weak spots. So as Peter says in his first letter, be alert and on guard. 
and on the lookout for the evil one trying to tempt you and derail you from following Jesus. The last two sections are much shorter, I do assure you. <laughs> so secondly, Pete Gregg says that we need to know our authority. This isn't complicated. It really is not rocket science. We simply need to remember that Jesus dying on Good Friday was not the end of the story. He rose again from the dead on Easter Day, and in rising again, he defeated the evil one once and for all. In Jesus' name, we have the most powerful weapon of all that the enemy will never, ever be able to defeat. Think of the Second World War. With the Normandy landing in June 1944, the Allied forces basically won the war, but it took nearly another year of mopping up battles before Hitler and the Axis powers finally surrendered. Now that's a really good picture for where we are in the world as Christians today. At his resurrection, Jesus defeated the evil one once and for all. The victory is won. But until such times as Jesus returns, we are living in the phase of the mopping up battles. And that's why we're still attacked by the enemy and while we're still involved in a spiritual battle. But we don't need to fear and tremble at that thought, because we are on the winning side, and there is no name more powerful than the name of Jesus. All the forces of evil, all the rulers, authorities, the cosmic powers of this present darkness, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places that we heard Paul speak about in our reading from Ephesians 6. All of them tremble when Christians use the name of Jesus because they know they are defeated and have no power over us. And then finally, says Pete Gregg, we need to know how to fight. We have all the weapons we need, but to be effective in the spiritual battle, we need to use these weapons. Paul calls it the armour of God, and that's what we read about in our Ephesians chapter 6. And so Paul talks about the belt of truth, that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. He talks about the shoes of the gospel of peace. We stand on firm ground because Jesus forgives us and calls us to share the good news of that forgiveness with others. We have the breastplate of righteousness, which protects our hearts and helps us to believe that Jesus has made us a new creation in forgiving us. We have the helmet of salvation, which protects our heads from fear, anxiety, from believing all the lies that the evil one tries to tell us. We have the shield of faith, which we use to protect ourselves from all the fiery darts that the enemy fires at us. And finally, we have the sword of the Spirit, the word of God, which tells us the truth about who we are in Jesus. And we've seen how important the word of God is in fighting the evil one, in the story of Jesus being tempted. And so if it was good enough for Jesus to do that, then it's good enough for us too. Now I said at the start that I'd emailed out to everybody whose address we have the prayer tool sheet for today. It's called Warfare Prayer. It's a prayer which we could use each morning when we get dressed just as we physically put on our clothes, so we can prayerfully put on the whole armour of God so that we're protected in the battle each day. So we're going to pray through that warfare prayer now. Let's pray.
the warfare prayer. It helps us to dress in our spiritual armour so that we can withstand and can advance. Heavenly Father, I come to you today as your beloved son and daughter. I worship you and I give you praise. You are worthy to receive all the glory and honour and praise. Today, I renew my allegiance to you, Jesus, my Saviour, my Friend, my Lord and my King. I thank you for saving me, Jesus, and for the forgiveness of sins through the victory of the cross and resurrection. Thank you that you triumphed over all principalities and power and made a show of them openly. I stand in that victory today, believing that no weapon formed against me can prosper. I put on the armour of God today. I put on the belt of truth. I believe you are the truth, Jesus. Your words are true and I am in you. I put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. By faith I stand, firm-rooted in your Calvary love that forgives my sins. And I walk forward today in confidence to share this good news with others. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. Protect my heart. I am a new creation and I have received the righteousness of Christ. I choose to die to self again today and display your righteousness through my words and actions. I put on the helmet of salvation. Renew my mind afresh today. I declare my mind set apart for you and therefore I reject the insinuations the accusations and lies of Satan. You have not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I lift up the shield of faith to resist all against the fiery darts of the enemy. Deliver me from evil and work in my life that there be no ground to give Satan a foothold against me. I take up the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and in the victory of Jesus I advance today, knowing that the weapons of my warfare are not weapons of the flesh, but mighty in God, to the pulling down of strongholds, to the casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and to bring every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. I break the strongholds of Satan formed against my body, soul and spirit today, and choose to make godly decisions today by the grace of God. I rejoice in you today, Jesus. May your joy be my strength as your grace and mercy follow my life. Jesus, you are my vision. Amen. At this point, we're going to listen to another song. If you would like to do that, we're going to listen to Be Thou My Vision. Uh, you've got the link in your email. And uh, this would normally be our offertory hymn, but obviously we can't take a collection at the moment. So if you're normally somebody who gives cash at All Saints on Sundays, then do think about taking out a standing order or uh, a direct debit or doing your giving by Bax transfer. If you go onto our Facebook page, there's a giving button there. Uh, or if you go in onto our website, there's a button there that you can click on that will tell you everything you need to know in order to give uh, electronically. I do urge you to consider that if you're not already doing it. 
So let's take a moment to listen to Be Thou My Vision. Before we move on to the communion part of our service, we think about the peace that God gives us. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so let's move on now to the communion part of our service. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise for ever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise for ever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, 
Renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To you be glory and praise for ever. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. And so as I take bread and wine now, if you've had bread with you, then do take your bread too. And as you do, thank Jesus for loving you, for dying for you, for giving you and giving you new life. We pray the prayer after communion. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would normally have notices here and maybe it's one blessing for you that we don't really have any at the moment. But just to say that Katerina and I are posting most days of the week, Saturday, um, sorry, Tuesday might be the only exception. We're posting either daily prayer or night prayer on uh, our YouTube channel. So do join in prayer with us uh, to build up that strength that we are still one body, even if dispersed. At this point, you might like to listen to the song Build Your Kingdom Here. It's a great song by a group called Rend Collective uh, that we sing at both services regularly. And it's a song that asks God's strength to go out and serve him in his world this week. So let's listen to that before our blessing, if you would like to. And so our prayer of blessing. 
Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. I hope that hasn't felt too strange for you. And uh, Katerina and I will be praying for people during this week. Uh, and do pray for each other too. And um, just give folks a ring, drop them a text. Uh, we can't visit, but um, we can stay in touch with each other. So I do encourage you to uh, text folks whose numbers you have, just give them a ring and see how they're doing and uh, come along to YouTube during the week to join us for prayer each day. So thank you and take care. <laughs>